What's up, Rifters? Today, we're gonna be looking at a character I've been wanting to make for a while. When I create characters for a campaign, I like to give them a soul instead of just rolling up a quick throwaway. And that's what we're gonna do. So I've already made the character sheet, and we're just gonna go over it. And a quick reminder, this isn't a how to roll up your character video, but a how to give your character a soul video. Big difference. The inspiration for this character comes from my family members who have all been construction workers at some point in their lives. And so that's who this guy is, a construction worker. And his name is Big Mac, because that's what all the guys used to call my uncle on the job site. And if you've noticed the image or looked at the character sheet, you're probably wondering, how does a construction worker become a headhunter? Well, let me tell you the tale. Big Mac lived in the coalition states, working as a construction worker. One day he arrived home to find dead boys leaving his house. They had just executed his wife for being a practitioner of magic. Before he could even say goodbye, they hauled him away to a work camp, charged for harboring a criminal. His rage grew slowly and silently as he plotted. He would befriend the DBs in secret, whilst gaining the trust of the guards. Then on a day just like any other, a massacre. A brutal, violent uprising. DBs threw themselves at the mounted defenses while the humans and other allies were cut down charging the dead boys. However, there were just too many prisoners and no coalition would survive that day. Even Big Mac, the leader of this plot for revenge, would suffer greatly. His arm blown off, an ear looked like it had been severed from a vibroblade, and one of his eyes, just like his arm, now poured blood. They broke into the infirmary and found the resident Cyberdoc hiding. This man knew Big Mac though, and was the inside guy for the rebellion. They shared a bond. The coalition had killed someone they loved. The cyber doc did what he could, then outfitted him with a bionic appendage. The only kind available in a place like this, a mining drill arm. Big Mac would wake up days later in a remote location, being watched over by a handful of friends from the work camp. There was no going back now. They would become rebels and fight the coalition at every stop, and Big Mac would lead them. And there you have it, from construction worker to headhunter. Just a quick little backstory I whipped up for the video. And I suggest everyone have short backstories at first. And the reason for this is skills and equipment will allow you to fill in the blanks in your backstory, which you can go back over and redo. I started to do that, but realized the point of this video is for me to show you how to do that. And so let's just do that now. Everything you see on screen is something I can take at level one. I imagine this is Big Mac almost a year into his new life, still learning how to lead and being a headhunter. So you're probably wondering, how does a backstory and skills give a character its soul? Every character has those, right? But do they really? This is where the soul is forged. What you see on screen as a random assortment of skills, I see as life experience. Real world trials and tribulations. And let's start at the beginning, when Big Mac was just a simple, hardworking man. So what skills would Big Mac have when he was just a construction worker? Language and literacy? American. That's what they speak read and write in the coalition states. And the next skill already begins crafting the character's soul. Language, Elvin, how could he possibly learn that? Well, his wife, instead of being just a practitioner of magic, if you remember from the backstory, is now also an elf. And the coalition do not like anybody that's not human. Pilot, tracked and construction vehicle, masonry, carpentry, physical labor, and weapon proficiency blunt. These are all skills that makes him a construction worker. And now these next set of skills are a Big Mac learn when he was thrown into the mining camp. Language, gobbly. Why gobbly? Orcs, ogres, goblins, any kind of muscle bound DB or monster race or creature like that would be the people working in these mines. So in the backstory, if he's befriending these DBs, he would probably learn their language. And again, lore, DB, demon, monster. Anyone that speaks gobbly, probably has a story or two to share. Radio basic, you start with that skill, but if you want to connect it to your character some way, you're working in a mine shaft, you definitely be using radio to stay in contact with everyone. These next four are a little iffy, but I've liked the way that I've connected them to have them make sense with the character and the backstory. So the next four are tracking, recognize weapon quality, interrogation, and hand-to-hand -hand commando. Remember in the backstory, you start at plotting. How do you plot? You track guard movement. You slowly interrogate people not through intimidation, but trust. Recognize weapon quality, you would probably get a feel when they were too dirty and when dead boys would have to go clean them. In hand-to-hand -hand commando, I actually had to trade two of my OCC related skills to take this. And the reason for that, I always imagined commando being a Greek pancreation or Krav Maga style, where it's all about the brutality of the fight. A little bonus flavor for my character, I wanted to be able to body flip people 
at level one and then use my drill arm while they're on the ground and just drill right through their armor. And the last two skills Big Mac would pick up in the mining camp, mining and excavation. The next phase only has one skill, but essentially has all the equipment. And that skill is aerobic athletics, which gives you sense of balance. Now, why did it take this? Big Mac would have to recover from that fight and the backstory. And this skill, I imagine, is something like physical therapy. And the rest of the skills, I will just list them off because these are skills you get no matter what. Computer operation, detect ambush, detect concealment, electronic countermeasures, land navigation, pilot tanks, APCs, hover cycles, read sensory equipment, wilderness survival, weapon proficiency, energy pistol, energy rifle, heavy mega damage weapons, blunt and shotgun, then horsemanship general, and even those skills you can connect to your backstory. And I'll do a couple real quick, just so you can see. So since I was forced to take Detect Ambush and Concealment, along with Electronic Countermeasures, I gave myself Bionics that were related to that in some way. And those are Universal Headjack, Eye, Optic Video Nerve Implant, and Radio Bandit's Ear. Now all these things, if I roll well, will let me eavesdrop on Coalition Soldiers and get the drop on them. As for Horsemanship General, essentially, I actually do want to play this character one day, in my GM, if you do not have Horsemanship General, you're probably going to be stuck out in the forest and have no way to go anywhere. And again, some bonus flavor for my character. I took Weapon Proficiency Shotgun because I want to use a big bore shotgun, probably a double barrel type one. And when I shoot them, it'll knock them down. Then I can go use my drill arm to attack them. So that's a sweet little bonus I put in there for my character. This video has gone on long enough and is way longer than I intended it to be. So for the too long didn't watch version, Way to give your character a soul is to come up with a core concept, which could be anything, a job, a piece of equipment. It could just be a skill that you like or a picture that you see in the book. Then you write a small backstory and you use your backstory to choose your skills. And then you use your skills to fill in the blanks of your backstory. Eventually, they should all interconnect and bring your character to life. If you have a different OCC or skills in mind, if you were to build a character whose core concept is construction worker, Leave it in the comments and I'll check it out. If you'd like to see more videos like this, especially on riffs, please like and subscribe.